time once again to slip into your camo, grab your bow, and join us out in the field for another episode of the Up North Journal, presented by PSE Archery. The Up North Journal crew is knocked and ready to rock for another exciting adventure. So let's step outside and hit the trail. This episode of the Up North Journal podcast is brought to you by PSE Archery, Black Eagle Arrows, Fourth Arrow Camera Arms, Wind Scent Vapor Hunting Scents, Killer Food Plot Seeds, Supplements, and Attractants, Cabela's, Spot Shooters, Antler Action, Family Tradition Tree Stands, and Badass Slingshots. Welcome back to another episode of the Up North Journal. Everybody, I'm your host, Mike Adams, sitting back in the cabin after the opening week of deer season here in Michigan. They Absolutely. Got- I tell you. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Two nice bucks down. Yep. I uh, wish I could say the same thing, but... Uh, it's been a, a dry spell. Yeah, it's it's been a long dry spell. Four um, years. Uh, four years. For you? For me. Um, well, I shot doe last year. I shot two does the year before. Uh, 2013 and 2014, I didn't hunt because of what happened here at the house right? with house exactly. fire and tornado and everything. Uh, but the last buck I shot was 2012 with my bow. So, you know, it, it, it was, it was a, an interesting week up at the cabin. Hey, Jason Radecki. And, uh, uh, so far we've gotten three bucks on the ground. Okay. That as of today, we know of, I haven't heard, I haven't heard any information from the guys that are still up there. Camp for us this year. If you remember last year, we kind of went on a, a, a doe mission, you know, yes. we, uh, we took 24 doe out of camp last year. Trying to establish somewhat of a population uh, control measure on our place. Yep. In surrounding area. One buck was shot. This year when I left uh, after the third day of camp, and I haven't heard anything today, which was day four, uh, four doe down, no bucks. Still no bucks. No, I only saw three bucks. And I, I mean, all of them were just like, just quick glimpses on the move real quick. But Really? But uh, we'll save that for later in the show. Hopefully we have time uh, to talk about that tonight. Why? Amongst Something else happened while we were gone? Oh, uh, well, you just saw the vi- uh, a video uh, that actually we just got called out for here on the Up North Journal. We did. We, we're, we're a joke. Yeah. Uh, apparently, to somebody who uh, who found uh, a disliking with us siding with Michael Waddell's take on the outdoor industry. But somehow it got confused with the Chris Brackett mess that's going on right now. And this person actually asked me, I believe it was the same person, last week asked me what m- our stance was on it. And I'm... First off, black or the outdoor industry's got a black eye again. Absolutely. Every time something like this happens, not only does the person who does something stupid suffer, we all suffer. We all suffer uh, directly or indirectly because of what somebody else did and how viral it goes. And this one went pretty viral. If you guys don't know what we're talking about, just get on Facebook and, and talk to a few people about what happened with some video from uh, Chris Brackett. And... I didn't want to give my take on this because there's been enough people out there. Everybody's got their take. Lighten it up. And, and, and what what is my take going to do? What side of the fence do I stand on? If what has been presented, if it's actually true, then he needs to feel the full weight of whatever laws he has broken and pay the fines, restitution, and whatever's coming to him is coming to him, just like anybody else. And, and, and he admitted it. He, he did out, admit he, it. He admitted it, said I was wrong. Yep. And then, okay, so now face the consequences. Face the consequences. Face the music. And, and that goes with the law. That goes with the people who used to watch your show or or maybe still do, you know, your fans. It also goes with your sponsors of losing sponsorship. Well, that, You've got a responsibility to, to not only yourself, but the fans and your sponsors. And and that's what he did. He, he sent out a, the video came. The videos came out. Mm-hmm. He came out with an apology. Yep. And that's where it ended. Then Michael Waddell comes out with a statement about the hunting industry itself in general, mm-hmm. but also has a notation of Chris Brackett in it. Yeah, he framed it around what happened because exactly. of what's been going on. Exactly. And and he even admitted in the video that he's he, him and Chris did not has not seen eye to eye before and almost came to blows. And like he said, he was the the southern guy and Chris yeah. was the hard rock guy and yeah, yeah. you know, there's everybody's in this that can hunt is from A to Z. Yeah, you know, in full it. disclosure, we we did interview him. We had him on the show. That was a long time. That was six a, years ago, seven years ago, maybe. It, it's been a long time. Right. That was... Uh, it's back when we were running a full team. 
Um, and that, that would so have that been was probably nine, nine or ten. Somewhere around eight, nine or ten. Yeah, nine, probably 2009, 2010, somewhere in there. Um, but I, I just, I don't get, I take personally what was said online because it associated me with sticking up for the, for him and what happened. Number one, we see video. He admitted to what he did. So if he's admitting to it, then it's true. Then it did happen in the Indiana. The only thing I can say is that was my first question. Is this in Indiana? What does the person who posted this, why, what is this rift between the two? And is he just saying it was why, Indiana? Why, is it, why does it come out that happened in 13, 14? Three, four years later. So that'd be three, four years later. Why did it come There's out There's something that's going on behind the scenes. Now, the other video we don't know. with him cussing out and, and, and getting into it with the cameraman. Okay. Religious views aside, I have my own religious views. I don't put them out here on the show. I hold them to, to between me and God himself. You know, you and I have had this talk before. We This show is about hunting, fishing, the outdoors, getting kids involved, new people. That's, that's right. what we do. That's right. He wants to put his out there. That's fine. That's his, that's his prerogative. If you want to judge him about what he did and what he said to somebody, that's your prerogative. I that, don't care. That's right. We don't know what happened before that. We don't know, did that cameraman drop a $5,000 camera and break it right we, before that hunt? We don't know. We don't know what, what set up and led to that moment. And I'm not sticking up for Chris. Right, exactly. I'm just we saying. Don't, we don't know. We only know a moment in time. Whatever, how many minutes that video was. Yeah, it was a short rant, clip. That rant. Yep. We only know, we don't know the beginning of it, and we don't know the ending of it. We, we don't, don't know what happened either. Yeah. After, after they might have slapped high five and said, hey, that was the funniest thing ever. Yeah. But we don't know. And don't know. Why should we go out and judge them? Like you said, what we take offense to is being called out that, well, I'll take the last line of this as UNJ's a joke. Yeah. Okay, that's why we try to go to Cabela's as often as we can. And, gee, we try to talk to people. And educate them in and the outdoors. educate them about outdoors. And when somebody new comes up, we don't push them aside. We don't, no. Take time it, with kids. Take photographs. Give them, give them high fives. We you know, listen to their stories. Li- listen we, to it. When's the last time anybody sat and had a kid sit on their knee and listen to a story about a hunting story where their grandpa took them or a fishing trip? And it may have been a little bluegill, but the point is, take the time and sit there and listen to somebody. Exactly. That's not a joke. And 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 that's exactly what Waddell says about the hunting industry. Yeah. Basically, it comes down to guess what, everybody. We put our pants on the same way as everybody else does. Mm-hmm. Sometimes no. right leg, sometimes left leg first. Whatever, whichever, but you put your pants on first, you know, leg, one you, leg at a time. I think you guys in the UP put yours on left leg. No, first. actually what we do is we, we stand on the top bunk. And you jump into them? And em. we jump into them. <laughs> do you hit the light switch on the way down? That's for a past episode. <laughs> right. So, uh, um, see, hey, we're joking, so it must be a joke. <laughs> exactly. And, it, 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 and he, he is... Uh, for all intents and purposes, dead on. Yeah, yeah. He goes, uh, we go out and we do what we do, but also we go out, we do what we do. We hang out at Cabela's. We hang out at, at any shows we go to. We take the time to be with the... And guess what? I'll be the first to admit that when we had this at Cabela's where a gentleman came in and kind of schooled us on what he did. Yeah. You know, it's a, I yeah, learned well, stuff. I'm all for that. So yeah. calling us a joke, yeah, that, that you're going to hear it. Yeah. Oh well, you know that that one thing is just um, is reality, and don't put yourself above reality. And the the reality is, we're losing hunters, and we can't afford to lose hunters and fishermen, people in the kids in the outdoors. Well, outdoors people. You know what? The prime example. This weekend, I was sitting at deer camp, and one evening, I don't know if it's, I think it's the first evening, maybe it's the night before the opener, and me and uh, one of the guys at camp, uh, one of our newer guys there. Started talking about it, and he, he, he said, you know, that's the problem. He said, we're not going to have kids up here, you know, our kids up here, if we don't get them up here and get them outside before uh, they want to get on their, their phones or tablets or whatever. He said, all these kids want to do is sit and, and be instantly gratified off the computer. And he said, it's hard when you – and we were talking – and it kind of led into to deer management. We are talking about, you know, we, we got too many deer on the property. We got, we're over browsed. We don't have enough food for them. And all those dynamics. And he's like, well, but if we start taking deer off the property and we're not seeing as many every time we set out, he said, we're not going to keep the kids engaged. And I'm like, you know what? That's where you start them young and you teach them from a young age and get them into the outdoors. 
get them out in there into the soil, help them with a the food plot, picking picking up sticks and clearing a field, or maybe going out squirrel hunting and teaching them about the differences of the animals and how they interact with one another. Um, why are we cutting this tree down? What's wrong with it, Papa? Because it's got a disease. We need to take care Ooh. of it. There's more to hunting than pulling the trigger on a stinking animal. Exactly. Or, or setting the hook on one. Exactly. It, 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 and a lot of it goes to the times you don't see a thing. <laughs> that was me this week. You, 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 if you're sitting with somebody or with somebody, take those opportune times to be with that person. I've yeah. seen a lot of posts about, um, uh, you, I miss my dad hunting. Or, or, yeah. uh, and matter of fact, this popped up on my memory thing on Facebook. Four years ago today when I shot my, my six point, yep. my dad was at camp. Yep. Right? So it's like, I ch- that six point that I got is probably the best six point, best deer I'll ever get. How that yep. all just worked out. It'll it'll be with you until the day you Because he helped me gut it. He did everything. But it's just one of those moments in time that that's a memory. And that's what we make memories. And then you go ahead and you share those with around the campfire. Just like yep. you guys did in, you know, yep. it's what we did. So then... And then we take that and we go from there. We we go mm-hmm. we go into the the stores. We go into wherever we're even when we're out out hunting. I was out turkey hunting this year. Talked mm-hmm. to a first time hunter. Yep. He, he the, him and his uh, the person with him both got jakes. Yep. You know I passed on the jakes and they just went down to his side of the field and they got them. But it was is all right. You know I'm okay with that. I'm not yeah. throwing my gun into the woods screaming. Yeah. What did you do that for? No. Hey. It's all good. It's all good. Yep. So, you know, it, we're talking about the video from Waddell. Go to our page or, or just Google it, um, you know, on Facebook and, and watch. It's 20 minutes. But I tell you, it's there's so many nuggets in that 20 minutes. You saw, we we're sitting here and I'm like, yep, see, see, yep. You know, because you can relate to it. I mean, things throughout my life that, that my grandfather taught me, that my dad taught me, now that I'm te- I taught my kids, and now that I'm going to be teaching my grandson at some point. You know, like you said, people in the stores um, are things you learn going to workshops and learning these things so you can educate yourself to be able to be better out in the field and, and, and give back. It ain't about what you take. It's about what you give back. Right. You know? Um, and, and, and tell you the truth, this year, uh, I put the most time in into the property this year, and and I was fortunate enough to take two bucks this year. So it was like... You know, at at the end of the year so far, I'm I'm feeling pretty good about myself. My right. hard work paid off. Paid off. Yep. It's, it's the reward you get for the work you put in, and you don't always get those rewards. Right. And now, okay, so now let's take that on. There's a there's a person up at camp right now. He's looking to get his first buck. Right on. And he's got the combo tag, so he has to shoot something three or better. Okay. On a side, he doesn't have a regular, which is fine. Uh, but I. I, we talked to him. I said, okay, we are sitting over over this plot of land. Yep, okay, let's adjust your blind. I tried to help him out. I said, mm-hmm. adjust here, do this. And, and he was sticking out. I said, we can put you in a different spot. There's other spots we got we're seeing deer. Right. You know, it's not like we're, there's a, there, we've seen a five point. We've seen, we, but we're trying to help him get his first buck. To get to that point where he can enjoy that. Right, yep. exactly. Because once you get your first one, mm-hmm. that that's like setting the hook. Yep. You know, and there was a lot of years I I went without before I even got a deer at all. Mm-hmm. You know, and then I f- finally got a doe. Mm-hmm. Okay, it was it not that big of a doe, but you know, you got one. I got one. Yeah, and you know, but it's like we're we're helping him, and and I hope he's going to be up there for the rest of this week. So I hope he ends up getting one, and he's 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 toughing it out on this forty. That they're gonna, he's gonna get a buck to come through, and I said you'll probably get a traveler right now mm-hmm. coming through. It, they're they're kind of chasing, they're not kind of chasing. It's one of those deals, but yeah, that's that was after I got my deer, my first one. I was more worried about where he was sitting, and it's like, okay, let's get him a deer. Right, the so, focus, yeah, your focus changed. You, you're thinking about other people, you know, um, you know, like you said, you put in the hard work. You were able to reap those rewards, and then as soon as you do, boom! You're you're trying to help somebody else. Right, exactly. You know? and that, that's that's the the gift part, and that's that's kind of where I was at. You know, at camp, talking and sharing information with people uh, in our own camp. You know, it's like, okay, well, I seen this, or I, I seen that. You know, no, I didn't see that one. Uh, you know, have you thought about this? Have you tried that? Different things, different strategies. Because you know, we we're in the same situation up there. Nobody was seeing anything. It, it was just, it was horrible. It was, well, it, you, it was you you had some week. interesting weather. It rained all day opening day. Um, you know, uh, I tell you what, we're running up on our, our first break here. Um, we'll come back. I want to wrap up this talk about all this stuff going on in the outdoors on Facebook page yep. right now. Let's wrap that up, and then uh, we'll come back. We'll we got time. We'll, we'll try to wrap up and talk about our season. 
So we'll be right back after this. PSC Archery has always dominated the speed category. Now, the most revolutionary cam system ever to hit the market has perfected the shooting experience. Introducing PSE's Evolve Cam System, featuring extremely high let-off capabilities and the smoothest draw cycle in history. No other cam system has ever delivered this level of total comfort and total control. Experience PSE. Experience performance. Killer Food Plots have been helping property owners for over 20 years create premier whitetail habitat. Whether replenishing your soil with their all-natural organic fusion pellets or planting a premier KFP food plot seed blend to help your deer rebuild their bodies through spring and summer while supplying the much-needed high energy during and after the rut, you can trust that Killer Food Plots family and their products will help your deer achieve their full potential. Welcome back. Second segment of the show. Well, let's kind of let's kind of wrap this thing up. Um, I don't want to sit here and talk about this whole show because right now I, I I I'm really angry. Um, you? I do take angry? I take things personally, and I shouldn't because I know I don't agree with everybody's hunting style out there. They don't agree with mine, um, but I tend to wear my heart on my shirt sleeve because I believe so strongly in the things that I'm doing that I'm trying to do in the right way. When I see something like this that happened with with bracket. Um, I, I do get angry. I get upset. I, it's just like, not again. I can't believe we, right. we're facing us again. And then uh, all the things that we try to do and try to do the right way, and then we get called out for being associated with something that, that's, I, I don't even know where that came from. I don't know why. And at this point, I really don't care anymore. Right. You know, not just, at this point, but we, we set our piece. We're done. So. We know where we come from. And that, that's, that goes to whether you use a, a, a bow, a crossbow, a long bow, Recurve, a recurve, or like a, Waddell said, a, a gun, a, a, a tank, a or tank, num, nunchucks, nunchucks. <laughs> Whatever your method is that's legal, do it. Go right ahead. Yeah. If spearing is legal, do it. And you practice it, go do it. Exactly. I'm okay with that. Yep. Will I ever do it? Probably not in a hunting situation. No. I'd like to throw a spear just to see if I could throw one. Right. 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 But it's like, and that's the point that gets us is. Um, when things like this happen, you're right. It's that oh no moment, right? Well, what happens is is like the video from Waddell said. The hunting industry, the outdoors as a whole, is shrinking. People who are participating in the outdoors. Um, he said, I don't I can't remember the year. It was 2014, 15. It was 13 million tags sold. Two years ago, two so years that ago. would be 15. 15. There was two million tags sold, and a, and a year later, there was 13 million sold. Thirteen it's million. Da, it's, and it's down, down two, two million now. It's down two million now. So, and that's not him pulling numbers out of his butt. It's from the Homeland Interiors, I think. Yeah, Department of Interior. Interiors. Interiors. Yeah, that's checks tax sales right. across so the United it, States. So yeah. So and, and we're you know losing people, and instead of losing people and bickering amongst one another, we need to be encouraging people and, and supporting all forms of hunting and fishing in the outdoors. Right. And, and trapping. And, and Tim, I'm going to butcher your last name, Tim. Tim Sias. Uh, good luck on your West Virginia uh, tomorrow. And you're right. No matter the situation, the outdoor industry will always have a bullseye on it. Tim, I believe, is a Mossy Oak Pro staffer out he's, of uh, West Virginia. He is. Good luck to you, Tim. Uh, but you're right. And he's right. But it's like he also called out some person, not any personalities, but the personalities that want to do it because of their looks. Right. Yep. Yep. Fashion shows. Yep. You know. It's, it, man, the, I just, I, I keep going back to his rant, that 20 minutes. It was just, to me, it was it was powerful. It was very good. It, it basically it, it basically made everybody, hunters, trappers, fishermen, campers, hikers, whoever, whoever partakes in the outdoors, along with the people who work in the outdoors, it, it, he basically called all of us out and said, Take, We're a team. We're on the same team here. Take what's been given to us. Cherish it. Pass it along to the next generation. And, and Take care and of it. And some... The Waddells, the Jordans, uh, you can name all of the big hitters, Fitzgeralds. Some have been given more of a, a, a platform to be able to be seen more often yep. and talked about. Yep. But that doesn't stop a neighbor bringing out another neighbor's to take them out hunting. 
That right, does it, right. it's we're all on the same team. Yeah. Wide Owls platforms a little bit taller than a, a lot of people. T Bone, yep. uh, those guys, all those guys have a platform. And they're just hunters. Yep. And, and, but and when and, you put on that platform, you have more responsibility. And what and what did he say was he he the thing that he hates the most? <laughs> the same thing we hate the most is be called. Oh, you're a professional. No, Ooh, I'm not. No, I'm a hunter. Yeah, we're all hunters. We're all hunters. There's, there's no professional hunter. You know, uh, I, I know that's what they call people over in the guides over in Africa. They're called PHs and professional hunters. But we're talking about here in the United States. We're all hunters. You know, it's. We've been given a platform by you, the listeners, and the people who are watching the live stream. You have given us the platform because you engage with us every week on the show. You know, we've got people on right now watching and commenting. All right. Hey, Tammy. Uh, yep, leave it better than you found it. Absolutely. You know, it's you have given us the opportunity to be able to, to talk to you every week. Yep. And, and share our experiences and the things where – and we screw up. You know, there's we're not perfect. <laughs> You know, I mean, no, I didn't go out and, and smoke two deer in Indiana like somebody did. But the point is, we're not perfect. And we screw up too. And what he also said was knowing the game laws. Mm -hmm. and know your game laws. He, he, he had a couple instances where in Kansas, mm -hmm. it, he, you only take one buck. Yep. He shot a, an eight point and a bigger one came out two seconds after he shot the first one. Oh, but well. he can't. Yep. But if he's in Georgia, he can. where you can shoot two bucks, he would have gladly shot two of them. Yep. So, you gotta know the game laws. Fly straight. Do what's right, uh, and, and you know, do everything to the best of your ability to to do things the right way. Right, and represent yourself and the outdoors in, in a positive light. And, and really, that's 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 about all I want to say about this. You know what? And it, 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 we're going to keep doing what we do. Yeah, yeah. Whether you call us a joke or not, you know. So, I, actually, I do. I, I hope this person does respond back because I, I'd like to, for my own sake, I'd just like to know where that whole take comes from. You know, um, right. I don't I, need validation from anybody. No, nope. I just, I just want to know why. Yeah. I mean, what was that thrown out there for? Yeah. It just, I don't get it. Right. I don't get it. But, uh, so moving along, moving um, along. deer season. Yeah. It, it, uh, it was a tough week, man. We had rain all day opening day. It started raining at 10 o'clock the night before I got to camp at nine. It started raining at 10 and it poured until after dark the next night. Really? Yeah, and I think you posted a picture of your weather situation, and it was pretty dreary. Yeah, yeah. Well, and then it turned to snow at, at one point, one day during the week. But um, it, I want to say thanks to uh, one of our guys at Camp Joe, who uh, who give me a ride out every morning on his uh, his uh, little uh, UTV. Okay. Yeah, him, those are great. Things. Him and his daughter, they hunt two sections behind me. Okay. And uh, I was like, would you mind? Give me a ride out to my stand or out to my area, please, right. so I can I can don't have to walk a mile in in the in, in the in, rain in the in the storm. Right, exactly. Do you sit out all day or do you come in for lunch? That's a good question. Does it depend it, on it, what's it, going on? It really depends on what's going on. So the thought, okay. So let's talk about yours before we get into mine because mine three days. Okay, all day every day. I was in the stand twelve hours. Well, to be true, truthful, eleven hours and thirty minutes. Six to Probably six to five thirty. Six to five thirty. Yeah. Yep. Six to five thirty. You know, and and two of the 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 first night, I, I actually he picked me up on the trail going back in. I, I kind of timed that one just about right. Uh huh. Because it was raining. It was raining. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, the the last two nights, I walked all the way in because there's a field. Um, we call it uh, not a uh, our guest field. Okay. Uh, it's not really anybody's particular area to hunt, but we plan it, and if you want to hunt, you hunt it. And I walked up on the field just it, right at dark to see if, if I could see anything. But it, actually, it was too dark to even shoot. I just wanted to see if I could see some deer. <laughs> okay. But uh, no, I did. I spent 11 and a half hours in stand three days in a row. And the first day, I saw one deer. Really? Yeah. And the only reason I seen it is because I had to actually get up and, and go outside to uh, use the, the nearest the little boy's tree. Yes. And, uh, you know... You get up in your blind, you look around, you're trying to make sure there's no deer around. After it was pouring down rain, I'm like, it ain't going to be in deer. I opened the door and then bang, 40 yards behind me, dead behind me was one. And it ran off. That's the one deer I saw that day. Really? I did see a skunk. And I did see a black squirrel. And that was it. You did see the skunk? Yeah, a different one. Yeah, we're covered up in them this year. I don't know what it is. Matter of fact, that's kind of funny you said that because outside our cabin, we smelled a skunk. And I'm like, oh well, boy. You, I posted the video of the one outside the, the uh, lodge. Right, the second night he was out there, right between the lodge and the lake. So he was doing his thing. But 
That was first day, so nothing to report. Second day I get out, and sitting in the blind, I got there right around 6 o'clock, and about 6.30, you know, it, it gets to that point, it, it's an overcast day, so you know it's going to break daylight just a little bit later. And I'm looking off to my right, and I got that little, there's that little short chute that runs off the, off my blind on that lower field. Okay. And the deer like to cross there because it's, it's not but about 30 yards across that, that opening to get from one patch of woods to the next. So... I'm looking at it and I'm like, man, there, there's something dark there moving. So grab my binoculars, had my vortex, boom. I could I could see the deer. It was Buck. He had hair head gear up and he went behind a tree and then I start moving just a little bit, trying to, you know, pick him up, see where he's gonna come out at. Right. And got the rifle, couldn't see the crosshairs. Really? So it was it was still that dark. It's still that dark. But he disappeared. I seen him just Man, for maybe five, five, six, seven seconds, it was pretty quick. Right, just identify as a buck with a rack. And yeah, you know, he looked like he had some pretty good headgear on him. So he he books off, and uh, I see another deer during the day. There was a doe that did cross the field, and I got to see her for about 20, 30 seconds. She had two other ones with her. And I'm like, hmm, old doe, do I shoot, do I not shoot? Eh, you know, no rain today. I'm hoping, we're going to have a little snow later on. I'm hoping that we get a buck cruising in. I just don't want to shoot one right now. You okay, know. yep, yep. So I let her cruise through, and that's the only shooter doe that I saw uh, those two, three days. Anyway, towards 3 o'clock, about 3 o'clock in the afternoon, actually back up a little bit, about 11 o'clock, I said, you know, I'm going to go check churro cams. Um, I was going to talk about this the last show we had, this little card reader. You can see here on the live stream, it's from Wild Game View. Um, I've got Browning cameras, and I when I purchased this, I wanted a card reader. I had the Bone View, but I give it to my dad, and uh, I needed something. So what I did is I got that because now it comes with an app and actually I put it on my uh, iPad. So now I carry my iPad in my backpack, plug that in, put the card in, download, have them all organized, and I can look at my uh, all my trail cam photos on my iPad. Cool. It makes it a lot easier. But uh, yeah, this little dude here, it works It works for the Browns, it works for the Moultrie, it worked for Bushnell cameras. Those are the three that I have. Uh, mostly Browning's, but yeah, it works. It's great, and it's got a little ring. I keep my key to my lock for my Your cameras. Cameras, yeah. So it worked really well. So I, I got. I was gonna go check trail cams, and I did a little walk around, went through the swamp, went over, and pulled a camera on a buddy of mine's field that I've been watching for him, and came back. And I got back into the stand probably about an hour and a half later. Just took a nice slow, slow walk, slow stroll. Yeah, slow stalk. You know, just seeing what I could see, and it all of a sudden became a big, huge snow squall come through. Oh. And it was wet. It was heavy snow, blowing. You could barely see. And I'm like, this is not good. So I hunkered down next to a pine tree, put my hood up, and just sat and waited, you know, until it got done, got up, and went and got my other camera, got back to the, the blind. Sat down, and that was probably, oh, 12, 31 o'clock. By 2 or 3 o'clock, I'm looking at the far end of the field. And if you remember, I wrapped that field with Border Patrol. Mm-hmm, yep. Well, at the far end of the field, it's 175 yards away. And I'm just watching along the line. And the deer have been running behind the border patrol. They've been using it as a block to get around the field. And it kind of peek, it makes them come through to peek into the field. All of a sudden, all I see is a, a big rack. Running really? Behind the grass. That's all I could see running behind the grass. Not really running, but trotting behind the grass. You couldn't see to shoot anything. You know, you couldn't see the body. Couldn't. What a tease. Yeah, I was just like, really? And uh, I seen 11 deer that day total. So that's that was day two. Day three, I saw two one was a buck he came in at that short end of the field again stuck his head through the border patrol like a kid at a crosswalk and looks left looks right looks left and turned around and, and went back in really he's looking for does yep that's exactly what he's doing you know he's a little four or six point he wasn't real big but that's that was it man and i saw a button bucket dark that was it that was it man wow it, it was it wasn't good man it just it rained that whole first day the wind did blow a lot that second day Ugh. and the snow came down and then the third day, it was just, it was perfect. No wind, cold, no rain. It was cloudy. Sun come out a couple times. And I'm sitting there the whole day, just like, okay, anytime. You anytime guys I cue the deer, right? Yeah. It, it just, it, but I wasn't the only one. Nobody at our camp was seeing deer. I talked to landowners around us. You know, we were on our co-op page, our Facebook page. And we right. commenting back. Nobody else was seeing deer. And nobody was shooting deer. I, I heard five gunshots the first day, five the second day, and I think six Five or six is the third day. Really? Just no, yeah, no shooting. I mean, Jeez. It, it's, I don't get it. You talk about putting work in and all the work we put in this year up there, you know, on my field that I did, and I had my buddy AJ come up and help plant. Right. We planted that field twice. 
dude, they, they just, they've decimated our fields. Our, our fields are just, it's down to dirt. I had grow cages up. So I know we had plant material growing. Um, the deer still hitting them and they're, they're walking right down the aisles or, or the, the plant planted rows and they're just mowing. So you know, you know they're there because that's not just one deer. No, no. And I've got truck cam photos of them, you know, eating on the fields. But but come hunting season, they all went to Florida. I've got a suspicion. We we think we, we kind of know some of what's going on. Um, part right. of it is there are surrounding landowners who do bring bait up. Yep. Uh, there's been several of them that's been caught. And matter of fact, there was more caught this year that I found out about uh, yesterday. Okay. And we, our camp manager calls it the yo-yo effect. So about the middle of September, the first of October, they start getting sucked off of the food plots because all the little goodies are put out that they don't normally get. Right. And that's what we're battling. So. And then, then when those goodies are gone, mm-hmm. they come back. Yeah. Imagine how that works, right? So that, and I think going nocturnal, a little nocturnal, because um, I, well, I, when I pull cards, I did see more photos at night than I did during the day. Mm-hmm. Because you're you're putting all those people into the woods. Yep, that's part of it. But actually, we only had five five hunters at camp, five members at camp this year. Oh, really? Yeah, and there was four of them had two had another person with them, so there was nine people hunting in okay. the field on six hundred forty acres, and no, and only two does, three, two, four does by the time I left. Okay, so four does by yesterday. Yeah, the, yeah, I left after the morning hunt, and uh, I didn't hunt in the morning. Actually, I had a meeting at uh, around the corner for the. Okay. Yep. Uh, that wildlife research center that we're working on. So we had a meeting there, talked with a couple other co-ops, and and they said the same thing. They're they're dealing with the same issues. So it's area wide. Wow, that's so, pretty wild. It is. It is. So, you know, it just goes to show you what uh, a week or a, from a month ago or what you seen in September or what you seen in August. Right. You know, and, and you do. You put all the work in. You know, it's. Uh, it was frustrating. At the same time, I'm sitting there. I'm thinking, how lucky am I? How lucky am I that my dad took and passed this on to me? Right. And, and I've got right. the opportunity. I've got the opportunity to hunt in, in, in a playground, you know, and work the soil and, and plant trees and, and do all the things that I do up there and fish and you know, and there's people that would love to go hunting, but like Waddell said in his video, they work sixty and seventy hours a week, scraping enough money to put their kids through college or pay the bills, and then. Hope they can get a weekend off to go hunt, and, and or or you're trying to you know you're trying to raise a family and make sure that the family gets to the practices or to the yeah. events they need yeah. to get to because you know you're working all those hours and you're you're trying to get divvy up time and yeah. then then the the time for the outdoors gets there it's but hours yeah well and it goes back to you know it's like I I don't need to, I don't need to kill deer to validate myself you know I I don't I get enjoyment out of working the soil I get enjoyment out of you know working through problems we've got at camp and figuring things out and trying to make it better for for right. my kids my grandkids um, you know I, I I've had, I've not shot a ton of deer in my life I've shot I shot enough to be happy right exactly and so, then it, you you're at a point where if you see somebody else get one I hate it's cool is it that's yes. Yes, yes, absolutely. And that's no joke. (laughs) We're going to step outside, take our next break. We'll be right back after this. So what do you do when you've completely redefined the way bows are engineered? When you've reached the pinnacle and the band starts playing your victory song, you start a revolution out of thin air. Introducing the all-new PSE Carbon Air, engineered with true carbon technology to be the lightest high-performance bow in the world. Experience PSE. Experience performance. Killer Food Plots have been helping property owners for over 20 years create premier whitetail habitat. Whether replenishing your soil with their all-natural organic fusion pellets or planting a premier KFP food plot seed blend to help your deer rebuild their bodies through spring and summer while supplying the much needed high energy during and after the rut, you can trust that Killer Food Plots family and their products will help your deer achieve their full potential. Third segment of the show. Talking deer hunting. Just 
still got the fur going on. I haven't shaved yet uh, either. No shave November, remember? Uh, I, I shaved before I went up. But you did? You shaved yeah. it. You freaking shaved your head, dude. Yeah, I did. Oh, yeah. You still got it? Wow, yeah. it's coming back. Yeah, it's growing back. I had enough, man. I just I couldn't take it no more. It's driving me nuts. There you go. During bow season when I was up there, and I had you know had all my scent gear on, sitting in a tree stand, and everything was tight. It's like my my head itched, you know. The hair was too long, so I, oh. yeah, I, I cut it off, man. Had enough. Ah, I get it. Oh, yeah, yeah, you you are correct about Charles. Hopefully, you guys are shooting some uh, some big deer down there this year. So, uh, so what else went on at your camp? What else went on at my camp? We had a skunk that came up close. That was excitement for night two. So that was good. Um, I, you know, I spent all day out there, man. And I came in. I eat dinner. I set up around and talk with people for maybe half hour, hour, and then I went to bed. You know, and slept because I mean I was up at you know four forty five every morning, right? You know, getting. I ready. tell you, eight thirty nine o'clock comes along, and it's like, ooh, yeah, that bed's looking really good. Yeah, you know, I, I didn't get tired out there per se, staying out all day. Um, you know, it's I, mental. I had a, I had a lunch with me, and I had snacks, and oh, <laughs> you know, how I'm about coffee. Yes, I leave the house, I get to work. I'm working. This is Tuesday night, and I'm I'm leaving work three hours early so I can get to camp. So I don't wake everybody up. Right. You know, I want to get to camp by 9 o'clock, which I'm, I made it. So I'm, I'm at work, and I'm like, I forgot my thermos. Uh-oh. You know, I got that Cabela's Bullet Thermos that I, I bought last year. Take coffee with me into the woods. Right. And I'm like, so I call my wife. Hey, hey, Shannon, what are you doing? Yeah, okay. Hey, could you look for something for me and bring it up or meet me halfway so I have to come all the way home? And she's like, no, I'm working. I can't. I'm like, ah, okay. So... I think to myself, I can stop at Cabela's on the way up north. So I stopped at Saginaw Cabela's. Oh, yes. And you want to talk about hard to find? Um, they didn't have a lot of thermoses, but they did have the same one that I have here at oh, home. Oh, yeah, okay. So, yeah, I bought, no, so now I got two. Now you got two. So, yeah, I had my coffee. There you go. Now you're now you're good. Yeah, and I spaced it out. You know, I had my lunch at noon, and then, uh, you know, I'd eat breakfast and be out the door by 6 uh, and hit get the UTV. I was I'd literally in the blind by 6.05. Right. Every morning. Um, and then at 8 o'clock, I'd eat a snack. 10 o'clock, I'd eat a snack. I'd eat lunch at, at noon. Eat a snack at 2. Eat a snack at 4. And then 5.30. You're, was, heading, you're heading, for, heading back because dinner for, will be For dinner, out. yeah. That's and it. it worked out really good. I mean, it, it, you know what, if you low pay, impact. Yeah, if you if you pace yourself yeah. and you stretch it out and you're having the right snacks, you're good. Yeah, you know, I had uh, trail mix and uh, granola bar for snacks and had the coffee and it all worked out good. The only thing that I, the only issues I had was the third day in the blind. You know, it's cold. I'll, I'll light the heater a little bit and tickle the heat on, you know. And right. I usually sit with at least a window cracked or open uh, just to get fresh air in. But that third day, I started feeling really nauseous and sick to my stomach. And I was like, man, that's a, that's just weird, you know, because I'd run the heater a little more. It was it was a little chillier that day. Yeah. Opened two windows and, uh, you know, leaned over, got a good breath of fresh air and turned the heater off. And I felt better. So, you know what? Carbon monoxide poisoning, folks, is no joke. No, it's not. You know, not at all. My blinds are not airtight. And I'm telling you, man, it, I, I, I felt it. Right. Exactly. No, that is no joke. There, that starts coming on, man. You look good thing you realize that. And yeah. Open some windows up. But yeah, other than that, um, I did play on my phone. Oh, hang on, where's it at? I got, I got, I got to show you guys something. Hang All on. right, so we'll uh, let Mike slip over there in his chair, and he'll come back, and because he was playing on his phone while hunting. I did stop Tuesday, not Tuesday, Monday. Monday, I bought this. This it looks like a cell phone. It's a battery. Yes, it's portable battery. It's an extended life battery, and uh, it's ten thousand milliamps. I thought the little ones I got. And they might charge my phone about three quarters of the way. Okay. I've heard that these will charge, give you three or four charges, full charges. Okay. So I had this, I had my phone plugged in, I had internet. I didn't sit on the phone all day, <laughs> but but this did help pass the time, being able to uh, well charge your phone. Back in the day, you'd grab a magazine or something, you'd be out there thumbing through magazines. One of the guys reads a book. If, if you read the book. Uh, now, if you got internet service, you can do the internet. Well, the thing that I, I really enjoyed with that is I was keeping track of, of uh, wind conditions. Oh, yeah. Okay. You know, storms that were rolling in. I knew what was coming. I mean, and you just kind of get mentally prepared for what's coming that, that day, you know, as you're out there. Right. And that that's the thing. Uh, where I sit, where I was sitting, my cell service was uh, nil to none. Okay. 
So I, I could get out a text, and that was, that's probably about my extent of it. Okay. So, uh, but uh, but you had that. That's cool. That's a good deal. So yeah, two little gadgets. I mean, I paid this this card reader was the Android's twenty bucks. The iPhone is thirty. Okay. You know, it is a little more, or maybe forty, thirty or forty. I can't remember. But I'm telling you, with that, with my iPad. I'm, that is the way to you check. Golden, eh? Way to check Chero cams with cards, and then the, the this little gizmo, the battery deal here. I got that at Menards for fifteen bucks. Okay, you know, and it works great. I, yeah, absolutely, I, I, I had one of those too that I was running uh, with my phone as well. So took some pictures, took some video, you know, with my phone. Didn't take my didn't take my my regular camera in the field. I just I, I this year I've kind of felt what you and I do with video should be about setup. And maybe after the fact, um, the hunt is just, it's too dang cumbersome and too dang hard to really sit and try to run a camera and hunt at the same time. It's very tough. You know, uh, turkey season would be a little different story, but with deer hunting, um, I did it in the tree stand because I had the camera arm, made right. it a little more self-contained. But if you're in a box blind and you're, you're tight anyway, setting up a tripod and a camera just doesn't work. Yeah, and then it, trying to swing a it, rifle. It gets tight, especially when the deer doesn't want to co- cooperate. Right on. So. so, And I had some friends visit me. Did you? Yeah, yeah. The third day, uh, the, the mice showed back. Oh, up. excellent! Yeah, yeah. One ran across my boot. Sweet. Did you give yeah. him some granola? No, I didn't give him nothing. No, I didn't, oh, I didn't feed come him. Come on, what kind of conservation are you You're supposed to help the wildlife? Yeah, well, I planted a whole field. They can go out and eat. <sighs> so I'll tell you. So yeah, that was that. That's really about it. There's nothing exciting, nothing earth shattering. Um, you know, yesterday I stopped for two or three hours over at All Band, mm-hmm. and uh, we uh, we gathered and talked about the wildlife and research center that we're trying to get up and running and, and co-ops and yeah, it, I met a few new people, so it was good. There you go. Meeting, meeting new people is always good. Yeah. So yeah, I, I, I didn't get a deer. I was disgruntled about it, but you're not done yet though, but I'm not done. Um, no, we're going to go back up the second week of December, the week, long weekend and do some muzzle loading hunting. Hopefully you're going to go with us. Um, if you can, and we're gonna, and I still have, we'll have a buck tag to fill at that point. So anything's game, legal game for me to shoot, right? And uh, we'll see what happens. You know, we're bringing up four kids from Indiana. Uh, we're, we're, there's a, a youth mentor camp down there that teaches them about the outdoors. Correct. And they're chosen amongst their peers, four of them every year. And their their reward is to be brought up here and get to hunt out of state in Michigan. They come up to our camp. That's awesome. So awesome. Sharing uh, the love of the outdoors there with you go. other people. So, so what, what was the? Ex- I, wait a minute. <laughs> I already know the excitement at your camp. It was when you arrived. Yeah. All right. This so, is good. This is good. This so, might take. This might take another show. <laughs> the, the, well, we'll we'll try to. No, we'll talk about it because uh, I tell you what they. Uh, <laughs> you're not the only person it happened to. It happened to the cabin across the lake from us too. I had this conversation with my cousin. We talked about this. I'm like, oh no, no problem. All right, so we left on Saturday. Okay. And a cold snap went through on Thursday. It was c- cold. Cold, cold, cold. It was cold. It got down four. Pro- up there, single digits. Yeah, it was it single. Was, it was uh, 14, 15 degrees here in the right. southern part of the state. Well, it was it was single digits up there. Okay. And we uh, uh, three of them were already up there at one of the camps, and we said, hey, can you do us a favor, run down to the, the camp mm-hmm. and light a fire? Okay. It'd be nice to walk into a warm cabin. That'd right. be kind of cool. Right. So we, we we met him on the road. Yep, we got a fire going for you. Everything's good. All right. We go in. We uh, walk in. All right. Uh, fire's going. Good. Uh, let's get the water up and running. I'll be, uh, typically, we shut the pump off, the water heater off, and uh, the electric. But the electric is already on. Fire's do, going. Do you drain the lines? No. So we go over, hit the pump, nothing. It actually just vib- it didn't even vibrate. It hummed. Okay. Oh, that's pretty odd. Okay. So I'm, I'm looking at the breaker. Nope, breaker's good. Look. Man, what the heck is going on? And all of a sudden, I hear my cousin go, well, that's not good. Uh-oh. And I said, what? And we looked at the pump, which was a steel-housed pump. Mm-hmm. It had a big old crack in it. Uh-huh. Well, that's not good at all. No, because you're not going to be pumping water with the cracked. Right. So I was like, all right. And then we looked... And we have a water filter, uh, one of those uh, in and out with the, the, it hangs down filter. Oh, the cartridge on it? Yeah, yeah. With the cartridge. That was busted in half. Okay. It was a solid brick of ice. Okay. I'm like, oh no, this ain't going to be good. Yeah. So then uh, I said, well, it was, uh, we got up there probably about two o'clock. I said, we got to go to town and get a pump. 
and lines and everything. Well, we didn't know that yet. <laughs> okay. So we run to town, and we started. We, we start with the pump. We we oh yep this this fitting shot it's shattered. Mm-hmm. This fitting shot shattered. So we started. We we started with the pump. We started working the lines, working the, and we just. We started. We we got the pump, the new pump to work. It was sucking air. It was like, okay, so there's another go look. One pipe just literally eight foot section just Split. shattered. Okay, splintered actually. It is, just, is it plastic? It was PVC. PVC. Okay. Um, it's like, oh man. So we 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 basically chased all the piping back to the hot water tank. Mm-hmm. Hot water back. And it took us... Was the water heater okay? The water heater is okay. Okay. And the only reason we think that was okay is because that's insulated water heater. Right. We were worried. We were like, this is not going to be good. So 12 hours later, six hours that evening till about midnight, and I said, let's just stop right now before we get loopy. Get some sleep. Get some sleep. We'll wake up. And we had to run into town, get some more fittings, and finish what we started. About 12 hours later... um, we actually got water, and, it, and a new pipe didn't bust. We had a couple leaks, mm-hmm. but it was holding water. Okay. Like we could hear dripping, and I was like, okay. So that was that. We got water going. We attacked uh, the toilet. Uh, fitting was leaking. We ended up replacing the innards to the toilet, and we had something behind the shower. We had to go into the wall to get and fix. That was, took us three times to get that fixed, but we got it. So you're a plumber now. Yeah, I hate I hate water. I I'd rather <laughs> stick my finger in an electrical outlet. But I, but my cousin was measuring and gluing, and I was measuring and cutting. We're just okay. what do you need? Okay, and we just and we went we we got it done. So that left us Sunday afternoon to finally get our blinds out and uh, let's go set up. Let's get out of here. Go set up. We got water, good enough. Nothing's blown. Uh, let's go set up our blinds, get everything set out, and we did that. We 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 split up, and I said, okay, I'll go do my blind. You go do your blind. We split up. We go do that. We didn't even hunt Sunday. We were <laughs> buttoning up Kevin. Uh, so Monday, I actually go back to Sunday night. Uh, my cousin to go make a phone call went out to the road, mm-hmm. and he comes back. He goes, yeah, look at this, and he showed me a, a picture of a buck on his phone. Like, What's that? He goes, he was coming back down the trail. And really, this this buck standing in the middle of the road, looking at him. looking at him, and he's like, "Okay, you gonna move?" And he's not moving. All of a sudden, it walks towards him, crosses the bridge that mm-hmm. we have, and basically just walks right by his truck. If he would have stepped on the gas, he could have hit it with the mirror, and it just walked off. I said, "Wow." Later that night, we were sitting there in in the yard. We could see, and all of a sudden, he came walking through. I said, "That's him." You could see the rack, and that was pretty cool. I said, "All right, get some sleep because we were pretty tired." Um, Monday morning, uh, we used crossbows, so I was out there, uh, got in my blind. Uh, we were allowed to bait, so we put out some bait. I put out my bait. Um, and basically, at this point, uh, it's like a dinner bell. So basically, you take the bucket, you walk to the spot, they're waiting for you. <laughs> and you, 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 you got a bib on, got the knife and fork. <laughs> I kid you not, you, from here to that door away, they'll, they'll, they'll wait. And then you just dump it and turn around and start walking, and you can listen. They'll follow you. Yeah. So I did that, and I, I sat down, and I had I had a deer immediately. Uh, I had a spike in, uh, some does. Uh, I had three deer in. And then all of a sudden, I, I was shooting the crossbow, and I had a little open window to my left. And uh, the doe picks her heads up and looks that way. And uh, <laughs> I got scared because all of a sudden I heard this thrashing of a bush, and I said, whoa, wait a second. That's not a doe. Right. So I lean forward, and here's this eight-point just thrashing a bush, and he's standing up looking. And I'm like, oh, 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 that's him. So I get ready. I got the crossbow up, and and he's going to walk through either one window opening or get to the other one. Well, he starts quartering away. Mm. I said, oh, no, you don't. So I let it fly. Uh, I put the I put it into the, the, the to his side, and, and it I hate to say it, but that is a, a great sound when you hear that thwack, that thwack, mm-hmm. and it it was loud because he was by about if he was fifteen yards, that would that was probably the max, maybe I'd say twenty at the most. Okay, and it hit him hard, and he took off tail down. He ran through a tree, the snow came off the tree, and then he went into the swamp. It's like all right, cool. So I waited. I said all right, enough of that waiting. I gotta go find some blood, 
and I found a blood. I, I went and it's okay, he's around here. He ran through this tree. I kind of loop around the tree and I found a speck of blood. And I was just about to the edge of the swamp and I looked down and he had made it to the bottom of the hill and that's where he was. If it was, it was 30 yards. All right. So he's laying there and I'm like, yes. So I texted my cousin. I said, big buck down. Uh, he goes, well, you want to get it now? I said, you know what? No, I'll take care of it. Um, we'll get him at breakfast. Because usually for Bo, we just hunt like a morning hunt, mm -hmm. take care of business, and then get back out for an evening. Okay. Um, so I got my knife, got my license, tagged him. Then I then I got it. Um, I ended up catching him in the back and then put it up into the front shoulder. Okay. So uh, I was using the, the T3s. Okay. And those things are nice. He didn't go, like I said, 30 yards. And I was using the, the Black Eagle Executioner bolts. Bolts. Okay. And uh, I walked up to him, and I see the arrow sticking out of him, and I, 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 I slide it out. I slide it out. Mm hmm And I'm missing the, the front end. Okay. And I'm like, okay. So it's now I've, I've got a broadhead in here somewhere. Uh-huh. So I said, oh, I'm going to take my time with this one. And right. literally, I did. I started from the middle and worked back, got all mm -hmm. taken care of. That. I was like, okay, and I, I haven't gotten into anything yet. And then I started up. I could feel in his rib where it, it I think it got to it, the wall, but it didn't go through. Yeah. And I'm like, and I like I pulled out the lungs, pulled out the heart, and I'm looking, and I'm like, I can't find this broadhead. Mm -hmm. And I'm like tiptoeing through, you know. Right. Because I don't want to grab it. And I never did find it. You so, didn't? No, I don't know where it's at. I looked in I looked in the huh. lungs, I looked in the heart, I didn't I clipped the top lung going through. I'm like Huh. So unless it got lodged up into his neck. Right. But when I was up there cutting the windpipe, I didn't feel it. So stay tuned. Interesting. Yeah. Now did you process that deer yourself or did you no. drop it off? I dropped it off at our local place up the street. Yeah, he might find it for you. Yeah, he might. I'll probably hear about it. So that was Monday morning, seven thirty. Okay. Uh, that was that was quite nice surprise to have that quickly happen and gave me that ample time to be by myself with it and take care. I just took my time, got did your it, thing, did my thing, uh, let the other guys hunt, mm -hmm. and then at breakfast he came out, took the UTV, drove into the woods and threw him in the back and brought him out and went and hung him. So that was cool. Well, I'll tell you what, let's let's take our last break. Come back. I want to hear about the rest of your week. Yep. So we will step outside. We'll be right back after this, folks. I shoot PSE because I like one pin to 40 yards. I shoot PSE for the perfect combination of deal and performance. I shoot PSE because you can shoot lighter poundage and increase arrow speed. I shoot PSE for the fastest bows on the planet. I shoot PSE because my livelihood depends on my bow. I shoot PSE because better engineering makes a better bow. I shoot PSE. 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 Experience PSE. Experience performance. Killer Food Plots have been helping property owners for over 20 years create premier whitetail habitat. Whether replenishing your soil with their all-natural organic fusion pellets, or planting a premier KFP food plot seed blend to help your deer rebuild their bodies through spring and summer while supplying the much needed high energy during and after the rut, you can trust that Killer Food Plots family and their products will help your deer achieve their full potential. back last segment of the show eight pointer on the ground shot him with a crossbow with the psc crossbow the fang and now you're getting set up for rifle season that which opens on wednesday or did you continue to hunt i continued to hunt okay because i had a combo tag okay uh so i went back out i was sitting in the blind that i shot the, the eight point with mm -hmm. and my cousin says why don't you go move over there? i said you know what i'm gonna stick it out i'm gonna see what's going on here and uh, i was sitting there and i'm kind of reassessing how i'm looking right I'm like, well, I think I want to swing 90 degrees. Okay. Okay. So it's it's it's, it's the 14th, the afternoon. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, do it. I'm just going to do it. And then I got a deer in, right? Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, this is going to be fun. Mm -hmm. So I, I pull up the stakes. Uh -huh. And I literally pick up my blind and rode it. Because I want the two slider windows from right. that blind in front. Right. So I literally pick it up and rotate it uh -huh. 90 degrees. Bring it back down. I look. 
Yeah, mm-hmm. they're still there. Does are still there. Oh, they didn't care. They're looking at me like, what are you doing? Right. They didn't care till I got out of the blind, but then they didn't care anyways because I walked the other way. Okay. So uh, I got that all set up for opening morning. Um, we didn't see much um, activity. We seen deer. Mm-hmm. We were seeing deer. We were seeing small bucks. We seen spikes, uh, three points. We saw a five point. So then uh, got to bed nice and early. And then uh, opening morning, um, started off seeing deer, uh, like I said. Um, and about 830, um, there was some shooting going on. There was not many shots. In the, in the UP, you usually don't. Mm-hmm. It's just how close they are. Right. And my, my cousin Brian texts me and he goes, who's shooting? Because we heard a shot. And I said, I said, I don't know. It sounds like it's coming from this direction. And it couldn't have been five minutes later, I hear a gunshot. I went, wait a second. That was him. So I text him. I said, was that you? He said, yes, sir. He got a shot a six point. Okay. And I'm like, all right. Look at my watch. I said, well, what do you want to do? I said, you want to take care of it right now? Or, you know, we'll wait. He goes, let's take care of it right now. Just get it done and over with. We'll get out of the woods, get the deer out of the woods. We'll go hang it and we'll get back in. I said, okay. So I met him back at uh, the cabin. We lightened up our load, uh, drove out there, uh, picked up the deer, and then uh, we, 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 we gutted it at a different spot and we put a camera over it. Okay. And we were, we were trying to get coyotes or wolves on it. I got you. Uh, only thing we got on that was uh, ravens. Ravens. <laughs> I was gonna say ravens. Yeah, yeah they were. They were which surprised <laughs> us actually. Yeah. So uh, by nine thirty, ten o'clock, opening morning, um, he had a six point. We had it hanging in the barn. So, All right, let's get back out there now. Like I talked before earlier, um, Dan, who was hunting, uh, I, I texted said, "Hey, you want to move that blind? Let's move it now." Mm-hmm. Said, okay. So I I put on my my orange and I went off and I helped him move his blind. Sitting there. Okay, so I'm moving his blind 50 yards deeper into thicker cover, kind of to hide the blind a little bit better. Mm-hmm. I grab a chair and, and a bucket, and I and I start walking. And I look back, and he's breaking down the blind. He's It, it, it was uh, the doghouse, the big round circle. Okay, yep. I said, just break it down to that and just carry it through the woods. You only right. got 50 yards. So I'm at the spot where I want him to come. I look back, and here comes a spike, a real tall spike, comes walking right between us. Just walking right between us. Your deer up there are not scared of you guys. Okay. And all of a sudden, I whistle. And all of a sudden, Dan looks, and he turns around and, and just walks back. So, okay. So, now Dan brings the blind over to us. Mm-hmm. We get everything over. All of a sudden, we're, we're standing there, and a, a doe comes in. Right behind him is that spike. And uh, the doe goes exactly where I, I said, we're going to put the bait over there. That's mm-hmm. the spot we use. And this doe is standing there looking at us. And the spikes off to our left. Really? So I, I'm, he's setting up the blind. I he, he's gonna put a camera up. I grab the bucket and I start walking towards this doe. You're gonna feed her out of the pail, <laughs> dude. I kid you not. I went to the spot. She moved off about 15 yards. I threw an apple at her. She went after the apple, and I we dumped it. He put up the camera. We walked back, which was probably about 40 yards to the blind. Mm-hmm. She just comes moseying on in. So. He did not. He had a picture of a, a six point that he took with his phone. Okay. He couldn't shoot it with his bow, but he got a, a phone picture with it. So he was uh, watching that. I said, okay. So that's the the deer he was after, really after. Um, so that was uh, opening day. We had a six point on the ground uh, till th- in the morning, uh, and I helped move a blind. I said, okay, you're ready to go. Mm-hmm. See you later. Uh, so I head back. I put on my, the rest of my gear, and I go sit down. Probably about. One o'clock, and uh, um, so they uh, I uh, sat down and they um, deer started coming in right away. And I'm like, okay, well, now I'm facing a new direction, so I'm kind of thinking, okay, bucks are gonna come. And for some reason, uh, two o'clock, I'm looking, all of a sudden, the deer kind of acting weird, this doe comes flying through. I'm like, wow, I look, and all of a sudden, I could see a rat coming through, but I, I for some reason, I thought it was a spike. Mm-hmm. But then I saw the forks, and I'm like, wait, whoa, whoa. So I grabbed the binoculars, I put it up in one window, and I and I count four on one side. I saw the brow tines. That's mm-hmm. what I was looking for. I said, oh, whoa, whoa, hold on. I can shoot this one. Mm-hmm. Right. So I grab, I put those down, grab my gun, and I, and I swing my gun up through the window, and I look, and I see this deer standing there that's a doe. And he's behind her. I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> I'm like, okay, come on, dude. You got to move a little to the right. And he moved a little bit, and uh, I shot. And he stood there. I'm like, 
looking through the scope, and I, I, said, I, I think I hit him. I was trying. He's quartering away again. Mm-hmm. Another quartering away shot. I said, man, what the heck did I do? I said, all right. I, I shot him again. And, well, this time I hit him, and he went. He just dropped. I said, okay. <laughs> Text my cousin. I, I got another one. He goes, what'd you get? I said, uh, it's either a seven or an eight. So I went over there, and um, he was laying there, and it was an eight-pointer, uh, smaller than my first one. And uh, I said, he goes, what do you want to do? I said, don't worry about it. I'll take care of it. Mm-hmm. We'll pick him up at night. And uh, I, I shot him in the sh- uh, The first shot, I shot him in the shoulder. And I, I, I broke his shoulder, but I don't think I went into the cavity. Because there's a, it looks like an exit wound on the front side of the shoulder. Mm-hmm. Because his leg is broken when I'm gutting him. I'm like, wow. Well, the second shot I put in the back of his neck, and that was the end of that. So uh, by the end of the first day, uh, we had two bucks down, and I was tagged out. So I was quite ecstatic. Tagged out. Tagged out. That's got to feel good. Uh, yes, it does feel good. And uh, they, uh, we got him hanging in the barn, and uh, it was, it was, it felt good. It did. I, I was, it was like, really? That's four deer off your property this year. Uh, yes. Kelly's, your two, and your cousin's. Yep. Two sixes and two eights. That's nice. It, 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 it felt really good. And that just that whole, how that second one happened so quickly was just, mm-hmm. and then my cousin, I literally got back to my blind after going to see him, getting back, and he texted me, and he, and he says, that you? I <laughs> said, yes, sir. <laughs> and because uh, we can tell when we shoot. It's just, yeah, you know, you, you know, we're, you we're know where they're positioned, at. right? Yep. And my shots came close together, so he knew that was a semi-auto. Yep. Because Dan was using a lever action. And I said, yeah, that was, that was me. I was, okay, cool. So it got, he got back at dark and then lightened up, went and got him in the dark through the woods. Now, here I am gutting this deer, right? Mm-hmm. There's a deer watching me. It was great. I look up, there's a doe watching me. I'm, I'm gutting. I remember the first deer I ever killed. I was 17, hunting up Wolverine, Michigan, up in uh, at, at Seagull County. And uh, that was it was run with a big bull elk. And back then, you couldn't hunt elk. Elk weren't scared of you. And after I shot that deer, that, that elk stayed there and hung around as I'm gutting it out, you know, looking at me. I had to actually had to take cover behind a tree a little bit there because he started pawing really? around and shaking his antlers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That kind of freaked me out. I mean, 17-year-old wow. kid, that was the first elk I'd ever seen in the wild. And, you know, here he is. He's all ticked off because I shot his little buddy, you know. Yeah, you did. <laughs> so, yeah, that's uh, that one right there. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sweet. Back uh, a couple moons ago. A couple moons ago? Yeah. So that was... Uh, End of opening night, and um, the weather was uh, Monday, Tuesday was f- snow ground mm. but foggy. Yeah. Uh, then it got windy on opening night. Uh, when me and my cousin went out on Thursday, to I went and sat with him. I, I took the camera. I was going to mm-hmm. go sit with him. Uh, we had to go find his blind. Really? Blew away? Yeah, blew away. <laughs> Did you find it? Yes. It was about 40 <laughs> yards east. Yeah, it, it blew hard. That and, was Thursday, right? Yeah, yeah, that was Thursday. And I'm like, okay. So then uh, I said, uh, so we hunted Thursday to dark. And then Friday, I said, um, we're going to, he's going to hunt the morning. I'm going to sleep in and then I'll go pack in my blind. Well, yeah. my blind was MIA kind of as well, but it got caught into a couple of trees. Oh, nice. So it didn't go far. But uh, yeah, no, then the snow started falling and it was actually Friday would have been it. Awesome. He was seeing a lot of action. Yeah. Friday morning, but he was only hunting till till the morning, and then we we're gonna start going through and uh, doing our cleanup and getting wo- out of camp. Yep. Getting ready to leave on Saturday morning. So uh, we packed up the trailer, went down, got the deer, and we were ready to go. But uh, well, yeah. Thursday it blew hard. I remember I heard I heard a limb crack. I meant sitting in the blind, and then I heard it crash, and I heard the big boom when it hit the ground. You know, and it startled me. He's like, "Man, I'm glad it didn't hit the top of the the hut." Right. You know, but I'm looking. I couldn't find it. But I, I did look at the far end of the field, and it looked like a freshly broken off tree. You okay, know, yeah, this big around. Oh, jeez. And I don't know if that was it or not. I don't remember seeing it there, but it was it was near a, a trail cam. So when I go check that trail cam, it'd be interesting to see if I see anything. Oh in, yeah, in there. You know, you never know. Nice. They're they're supposed to be triggered by uh, you know animals' body temperature, the heat signature. But who knows? I've got false triggers before, so. Right. Exactly. So, um, mm-hmm. and then coming home Saturday. Oh, it was a whiteout around Mayo. Well, I hit Gaylord, and from mm-hmm. Gaylord down, it was between a whiteout to rain to whiteout to. By the time we got underneath Saginaw, it was all rain. Yeah, same. But for me. it was just like coming down. I was yeah. like, 
I headed home about two o'clock, and and as I got oh about a half hour south, couldn't see. The road was completely covered with snow. It was coming down. You know, that's the first time I drove the Jeep in the snow, so I was you know kind of tender footing it a little bit, checking it out, making sure I was okay. Right, and you know that that. <laughs> We were bringing home a trailer, so it was like, okay, it would, we were watching the temperature on the truck, and mm-hmm. it went from, like, 39 down to 33, went back up. I was like, jeez, oh, beat. Well, it sounds so, like you had a good season. Uh, yeah, we did. It was uh, it was good, and we're hoping for some more luck. Uh, there's three left at camp till the, till the weekend, mm-hmm. so we'll see how they do. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see what happens at our camp this week. You know, as the days, the hours clicked off, as I was sitting staring, somebody said, well, how'd you do today? I said, well, I, I stared the bark right off trees. There you go. <laughs> you're just sitting there glued. And you you know, you're, you're doing this back and forth for, for 12 hours, you know. My neck got sore. But, well, that's uh, it, because you don't know, and like the, the, the second eight point, it happened so quickly. Yeah, they just bang. It was it was like, whoa, here, get ready and, and shoot. And I thought about that, you know, yeah. the, the moment I saw him, Recognized I could shoot him, got the gun, and shot twice. And it, it Probably was, less than 10 seconds. It, it was all over, and I'm like, yeah. wow. That, that happened quick. quick. Yeah. yeah. All the bu- the, the three big, bigger bucks that I saw were all uh, probably less than less than 10 seconds. Probably actually more like five. Right, exactly. It's just, okay, there's antlers. Okay, oh, yeah, they're gone. And you're sitting out there, like you just said, hours on end waiting for something to, that's going to happen in something seconds. Something to happen. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know? That but, just to this day, we for the hours you put in, did a lot of thinking. Got a little time on your hands while you're out yeah, there. Yeah, uh, you know, like I said, you know, I was I was upset because I wasn't seeing a lot, you know, no action and no success. But then again, you know, then you feel blessed for being able to get out and spend time in the outdoors. Um, I, I did a lot of thinking about looking ahead to next year of stand stand placements. So we'll uh, we'll let Mike run over to the phone real quick and see what happens. We should be okay. It'll come back on. Yeah, it will. Broadcast interrupted. And we're back on. All right. My dad has still not learned what time we do our show. <laughs> but, dad. But uh, looking ahead at, at next year for stand placements, I'm already thinking about you know where I'm going to move and how I'm going to hunt differently. Okay. Concentrate on certain areas and movement. And a lot of it had to do with the logging stuff, I think. I think, you know, and you got to remember, I've moved into this area. This is only my second full season, right? Hunting this this section of, of the property, and I'm still trying to figure it out, you know. And then that was a, a, a true statement for us as well because we just had it logged this year. Yeah, same so for you. So it was like, okay, where are these deer going to be moving? Right. Uh, my cousin Brian shifted his spot, mm-hmm. uh, and it paid off. It kind of figured out how that watching the edges. Yeah. He yeah. was actually in the field watching the edge of the field. Yeah. Watching the edge of the woods. Yeah. Uh, for me, my spot really didn't change over there because it was, it, it's a more of a funnel along the edge of the swamp. Yeah. Uh, Daniel's spot over there was, was kind of the same thing. Where are these deer mm-hmm. going to change to a little bit? So, um, but it, like you said, that's the second year for you. This is the first year coming mm-hmm. off the log, logging project. Uh, probably it's going to change again next year a little bit. Well, and another thing that's changed for me, um, it's changed over the years. The fact that last year and this year, I hunted by myself for all intents and purposes. Now, d- during both season, my dad did come up. He hunt. He got out in the field with me and helped me hang a tree stand. He actually set out for one evening. Right. You know, to hang out. But he wasn't sitting in the blind with me or in, in my tree stand. He was, he was sitting in there standing. Right. But to be able to have that camaraderie, and I like spending time with the guys at camp, you know, the people that, that we associate with up there. But when you're the only person in camp and out of your family or your group, you, you don't have, you know, like, like you, if you come up or any of the other guys that I associate with here more frequently or family members. Yeah. It's just, I don't, it's not the same. And the last, since my, my dad left seven years ago. So this, this was my eighth opening day that I haven't hunted with my dad. Right. And it, it's, yeah, it gets to me, you know, it, okay. it's, it's a little, like I said, when you're, when you're sitting in a blind, <laughs> Three days for twelve hours, you know you got everything staring, from, staring the bark off the trees. Yeah, you got everything from thinking about what we're going to talk about on the podcast to wondering what your kids are doing in school to wondering if they're going to get home safely. You know, or you know, hey, I got bills I got to pay when I get home. Um, you, you, we're thinking about next year, right? Meeting with people, figuring out what our, our schedule is going to be, and then you know you think, man, I wonder, I don't know how Dad's doing. You know, I wonder what he's up to today. And those things when they start playing through your mind, I mean, all of a sudden. Yeah, you're staring at the field, but 
then you kind of come to and it's like, oh, hey, there's a deer. <laughs> right. And you look at your watch and a half hour's passed. There's a lot of thinking going on. Yeah. So, you know, there's a lot of a lot of uh, soul searching and reflecting done this year in the blind for me. Okay. And, and I don't know if, I mean, I don't know if that's good, bad, or indifferent. It's just. It, that's what it was. It's, it's just something that, uh, you know, I, I did a lot of reflecting back on things and, and thinking ahead about things and, you know, thinking about how I'm going to set, you know, that hunting area up for next year and. You know, things I want to do with the kids and, and getting, you know, my grandson up there in a couple of years. You know, probably about four years, actually, by the time he's old enough to even get in the woods. But, yeah, you know, it's, I don't know. It's, I'm, I'm at, I guess at that, it's not a midlife crisis, but I'm at that point in my life where I'm looking at retirement. I'm looking, how long, how many more times am I going to get to hunt? Right. And quit complaining about not seeing anything because... You're out there, and you don't know when that's going to be the last time you get to hunt. You never. We're not promised tomorrow, man. No, yeah. we're not. Yeah. It's you know, I so. the, the one day uh, opener the fourteenth. I sat out there all afternoon, and and I had deer basically from the moment I walked out there, and they were there from the moment I sat down. Actually, before I got to the blind, and till dark, and you sit there and you're watching deer trying to move, look because things happen really quick, and then. You, you, but then you look and go, wow, that was a quick half hour. So it was like, wow. So definitely you got some time out there to do reflecting. Yep, yep, absolutely. It's a, it's a good time to kind of, when things are slow, maybe to check yourself a little bit. A little and, soul searching? Yeah, yeah. So Absolutely. There, there's no better time. Uh, now, when me and my cousin were sitting together, it was kind of fun, mm-hmm. you know. But when you're by yourself and you're, you're first of all, you're running through your what you're going to do. But then it's like, yeah, it's like you you, you sit back and you kind of check things off the checklist of yeah what's going on. Yep, yep. It gives you time to, to see where you're at in life, so to speak. Right. So, you know, and this is a good week coming up here, Thanksgiving this week. You know, be thankful for, for the things we've got and the people we got around us and the things yeah. we're able to do. And on Thursday, you know, a, a day of Thanksgiving, uh, be thankful for being able to get out in the woods, being able to hunt, uh, whether you get out there, uh, you can walk out there or, or you're helped out there with a wheelchair or, mm-hmm. or just being able to, to get out there and hunt and right. or, or fish for that right. matter. There's a lot of people fishing this time of year as well. Right. So definitely uh, be thankful on Thanksgiving. Uh, and then Friday morning, you can uh, go go uh, taking the boys out. Yep. Sh- shopping, right? No, no, not no? going shopping. No. No, going to go play some disc golf okay. with the kids. There no, you go. No, uh, thankful on one day, and then the next day you turn around, and you go buy stuff uh, on sale and kill people trying to get to it. <laughs> you know, like I said, so, uh, uh, two opposite extremes. Deb did that once and once only. And <laughs> she, I watched her get up bright and early, <laughs> wave goodbye to her, and I don't think uh, it was an hour later she was back home all mad that they were sold out, whatever they had. <laughs> she climbed into bed, and she's never done it again. Yeah, right on. So. All right, well, that's all I got this week, man. Yeah, you know what? Uh, for everybody out there that's listening on Monday, uh, have a happy Thanksgiving. Absolutely. And uh, how about we see him next week? Next week, absolutely. And go over and check out the the, the Facebook rant with Michael Waddell. I'm telling you, it, it it gives you a whole new perspective on the outdoors and hunting and wh- how we how we view it and how we partake in it. Oh, yeah, it's exactly. A good, it's a good time. So, All right, y'all take care. That'll do it for us this week, folks. This episode was brought to you by PSE Archery, Black Eagle Arrows, Fourth Arrow Camera Arms, Wind Scent Vapor Hunting Scents, Killer Food Plot Seeds, Attractants, and Supplements, Cabela's, Spot Shooters, Antler Action, Family Traditions Tree Stands, and Badass Slingshots. Thanks for listening, and join us again here next week. Until then, remember, as we always like to say, if you're out on the water or in the woods, shoot straight and be safe until next week on the Up North Journal. Thank you.